hope I'm audible and visible. Can I get a very quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine, all of you? Can you give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine? Yes. So let's start with today's session. I'm Dr. Jeshta Agarwal, your lead page educator on the best online platform that is Unacademy. Uh, now on uh, Unacademy, we give you a lot of free live classes and these are the lead PG free live test calendars uh, for the April 18th to April 24th. Now we have a plus subscription which gives you an access to both an academy live classes from the top educators. I request all my students to kindly get yourself enrolled. I hope my audio video is clear to all of you. Let me just check it. Yes, amazing. Now we have an iconic subscription which gives you an access to both an academy live classes from the top educators. And we have an academy uh, plus which gives you an access to the Unacademy Lite, where you can have an access to the quizzes, test series, and the important papers. Now, we have an MBBS Pro Fund batch, which is uh, starting on April 20. So, I request all of you to kindly use my code CHESHTA10 and get yourself enrolled. We are launching an auto daily test papers. So I would be requesting all of you to kindly get yourself uh, enrolled. Here, only the plus student can access the questions. We have a doubt clarification batch on April 6th, which will go till May 6th. I congratulate to all these students who have cleared their need PG entrance examination. We do have special class features uh, where the free classes are taken up by the educator. New batches are about to start. They are the FMG batch and the need PG subscription is following. So kindly use my code CHESHTA10 and get yourself entered. Now, we will begin with the first question of the today's session. Please tell me the correct answer of this question. A 36 year old man, what is the correct answer here? I would request all of you, I hope my audio video is fine and you all can hear me properly. So let me start with the question. So we have a 36 year old Sri Lankan man who had a 10 year history of epilepsy. So just mark the important points here that we have a known case of epilepsy with us. We have a known case of epilepsy here which was well controlled on sodium valproate. So this man was taking sodium valproate. But because uh, he was on vacation and he was actually visiting his sister so, as he ran out of his regular medication on vacation, he started taking the sister's carbamazepine. Now, he presented to emergency department nine days later with general malaise and widespread blisters. So, patient presented to the healthcare uh, system or emergency department with the help of generalized blisters. So, on examination, he was febrile, tachycardic. He had blistered targetoid lesions and pronounced oral and genital mucosal ulceration. It means patient presented with the complaint of toxic epidermal necrolysis. He presented with 10. Now, everybody knows that carbamazepine is a well-known drug for causing toxic epidermal necrolysis. But one thing which you all need to know is what is that genetic haplotype which is uh, required or which is uh, if it is positive the patient have a chance of getting carbamazepine induced drug reaction so that is a very important question the correct answer as given to me by all of you it is HLA B1502 it is HLA B1502 which is a target uh, haplotype or I should say the genetic testing should be done prior to carbamazepine those who have positive HLA B1502 they are more prone for getting the Toxic epidermal necrolytic life feature with carbamazepine. Very nice Mega, Pallavi, Dr. Apurva, Amalgamate, and all the other students. Next question is on the screen. Long, lengthy question we have. Two year old girl brought by her mother who reports that child has a marked. Mark that grew in the size and blanked spontaneously. 
Dermatological examination showed a brownish hypochromic papule with blackened area on the front of her right ankle. Skin biopsy shows a well demarcated, vertically oriented nest of epithelioid spindle shaped cells with abundant cytoplasm containing fine dispersed melanin pigment. We have large nucleus with regular nuclear contour. Within the nest, we could see eosinophilic globules. Which of the following is the correct answer? Melanocytic nevus, malignant melanoma, Spitz nevus, or cherry angioma. Anybody can tell me the answer here? So the important clue or hint in the question is, if you look at the last question, uh, last line, patient was given Camino body. So patient was having a lesion with a very characteristic eosinophilic globules, which is known as Camino bodies. Another important clue is it appears very similar to that of a melanocytic nevus, a brownish hyperpigmented capsule uh, with a blackened area on the front of her right ankle. Very, very characteristic of a Spitz nevus. Okay. Now, this is a benign condition. Previously, uh, we thought this condition to be a variant of malignant melanoma but that fact has not been proven and it is now considered to be a separate entity uh, where if you do a biopsy you can see a very classical Camino bodies in them and here you have an image which beautifully describes how these bodies appear. Next question. Sixty-three-year-old patient presented with a lesion on his toe that has doubled in size in the past year. It is non-tender and it does not bleed, but his wife says that it is getting bigger and darker on one side. The macule is 7 mm. Which of the following is the diagnosis? The correct answer is malignant melanoma. And how do I say that malignant melanoma is the correct answer? Can you tell me what is that criteria which we keep in the mind whenever you get a melanocytic nevus? Very nice. The criteria which we have is A, B, C, D, E criteria where A stands for asymmetry of the lesion. So when a benign lesion which is actually symmetrical, both left and right are symmetrical, when a benign lesion becomes asymmetric, like this. The left and the right do not remain same. This means that the lesion have progressed to malignant melanoma. The borders which are initially smooth, you can see the borders were smooth here, but the borders becomes irregular. The color becomes patchy. At few places it is darker. At few places it becomes light. D stands for diameter. There should be increase in the lesion. It should become more than 6 mm. And E stands for evolution. Very important. E stands for evolution. So this is a very, very characteristic feature. A, B, C, D, E criteria of malignant melanoma. Another question is on your screen. A 55-year-old male farmer from Urissa uh, developed a whitish depigmented macule over the trunk. And clinically, he was diagnosed as tuberculoid leprosy by some local doctor and was under treatment in rural dispensary. So he was diagnosed as tuberculosis in a rural dispensary where there is a strong possibility that there are no qualified doctors or there are no dermatologists or uh, the postgraduate doctors. You can have MBBS doctors because we are talking about PHC or in fact more uh, below that, that is rural dispensaries. Within five months, the macule gradually developed into an erythematous patch followed by multiple non-ulcerated soft painless cutaneous nodule all over the face, trunk, extremity. No mucosal involvement was seen. What is the investigation done here? So, if this patient was a tuberculoid leprosy and he was already on the treatment, he should not progress to some different lesions. So, one thing we are clear that this diagnosis of tuberculoid leprosy which was made is wrong. Now, please tell me which is that uh, condition which 
present initially with prolonged fever giving you uh, the impression of some other disease and later it presented with depigmented lesions or the uh, you know the erythematous papule nodule anyone can tell me what can be the diagnosis very nice please remember this is a patient with very classical post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis now in this particular condition the patient will have initial hypopigmented patches and then it converts into multiple erythematous papules and nodules very nice dr shagufta veda shri dr purva dental q very very nice all my dear students clear hai so if it is pkdl what should be the answer for pkdl you have to do a smear for genes are stain and in this smear what do you see you will see leishmania donovani bodies you will see leishmania donovani bodies when you do a smear in these individuals clear hai can i get a quick thumbs up from all of you if this question is clear let's move to the next question on your computer screen patient presented with thick raised hyperpigmented lesions which are mainly present over shin and ankle on histology there is a dense band like infiltrate predominantly lymphocytes in the papillary dermis that extend to the epidermis where there is vascular alteration of the basal layer necrotic keratinocytes irregular keratosis and wedge shaped hypergranulosis Yes, the correct answer of this question is lichen planus. Please remember, in lichen planus, we have a very characteristic histopathological finding. Now, how does it present clinically? Clinically, we have five P's. The lesions they are papule. They are polygonal. They are purple. Plain top. Papule, polygonal, purple, plain top, and what else? The lesions are. <clears throat> Please remember that these lesions will have a very characteristic pruritus, very itchy lesions. Now we are adding two more P's. One is for the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which you get in these patients, and there is a very characteristic nail change which is known as pterygium. when you do a histopathological examination you will see very very characteristic feature of wedge shaped hypergranulosis and there is basal cell degeneration clear hai please give me a quick thumbs up if everybody is or they have understood this particular question okay now let's move to the next question please remember these sessions which i am taking here on the youtube channel they are very brief uh, you know uh, they are very brief sessions of 15 minutes to 30 minutes i would highly recommend all my dear students to please download an academy learning app which is an amazing app an academy learning app now like the youtube on an academy app you have free sessions which are known as special classes which you can easily access simply by downloading you can even use my code cheshta10 to get yourself enrolled in this particular okay now
This is a question in which a 24-year-old female with a 10-year history of atopic dermatitis presents to emergency department with high fever, malaise, lymphadenopathy and sudden vesicular eruptions on the face, on the neck, on the trunk and extremities. The eruption has begun after intense sun exposure. Physical examination reveals vesicles, pustules, cap on the face, neck, trunk and genitals with regional lymphadenopathy and on doing microscopy we could see multinucleated giant cell. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is eczema herpetica. The correct answer is eczema herpetica. Is this clear? What is eczema herpeticum? It is a condition where the herpetic lesion, the herpes vesicles occurs over the site of atopic dermatitis. Why it occurs over the site of atopic dermatitis? Because at atopic dermatitis plan, the uh, barrier of the skin is very, very poor. So that is something which helps us differentiate between the uh, other, fee, other options which is given in this particular question. So with this, we are done with the today's session. It was a very brief session of 15 minutes. I request all my students to kindly follow me. These are just the trailers, I should say. The whole movie is left. So if you want to watch all the questions like this, please use my code CHESHTA10. This code will give you 10% discount on Unacademy Light subscription, which is around 2,100 rupees for two months. Please get yourself enrolled without wastage of time. So bye-bye all of you.